Hello. I own a 2011 Volvo C30 T5. It's a fantastic car. The Volvo B52 2.5 liter 5 cylinder engine makes enough power to have fun without getting in too much trouble. Made it to the M66 6 speed manual transmission, the Volvo white block 5 cylinder turns the C30 into quite a sporty car. However, one thing I always thought was missing from the car was a boost gauge. While not strictly necessary for every turbo car, a boost gauge offers the driver extra information about how the car is performing, and it looks pretty cool. The most traditional way to install a boost gauge in a turbo car is to run a vacuum line from a port on the manifold to a gauge inside the car, wire it into the car for lighting, and attach it to a bracket on the dashboard somewhere. I didn't like this solution. The vacuum routing for the car was difficult and complex, the available brackets for installing the gauge were expensive, and wiring the gauge into the dashboard for brightness was impossible because it was all digital. So, I looked into other solutions. I saw products that you could install that would read off OBD2 parameters in real time that looked like they would fit the bill, but when I researched it more, I found that Volvo does not make boost pressure available in the standard OBD2 PID set. This meant that I would have to dig further. At this point, I knew that my car had a pressure sensor in the intercooler, and I knew that the values from that sensor could be requested with the Vita diagnostic software. My next goal was to figure out how the protocol that the diagnostic software used works. CAN, or Controller Area Network, is a standardized protocol that is used in nearly every vehicle on the road today. It allows the various computers in the car to communicate with each other at high speed, is resistant to electrical interference that is abundant in vehicles, and offers simple physical interconnects with just two wires. My Volvo has two CAN bus networks, a low speed network running at 125 kilobits per second for the infotainment system, door locks, instrument cluster, and other low priority devices, and a high speed network running at 500 kilobits per second for the engine sensors, stability control, and ABS systems. The CEM, or Central Electronics Module, located above the passenger side kick panel, acts as a gateway between the two networks, allowing some relevant traffic to traverse the high to low speed barrier, similar to how your internet router works as a gateway between your local home network and the internet. Unlike some cars, the CEM in my Volvo does not also act as a gateway to the OBD2 port. This means that all of the traffic sent on the CAN bus is available to work with. Additionally, Volvo went the extra mile and also pinned out the low speed bus on the OBD connector, allowing access to both the high and low speed CAN bus segments completely unfiltered data with no wiring harness splices required. By using a diagnostic cable, initiating a diagnostic session, and recording the frames of the data logging device, I was able to look at messages that the diagnostic software exchanged with the car's ECU. This allowed me to more closely look at the format of each message and determine the layout so I could send my own messages with a microcontroller. This is an example of a message that gets sent from the diagnostic software when you request boost pressure. Every message passed between ECUs in this car, not just diagnostic messages, contain a 29-bit message identifier and 8 bytes of data. If less bytes are used in an individual message, the remaining bytes are padded with zeros. Note that this scheme, with extended addressing and 8 byte frames, will likely be different for other manufacturers. If I break the message down into parts, I can better understand how to craft my own messages. The message ID of the tester is set to this hex value. This is the only ID that ECUs in the car will respond to diagnostic requests from. It also has the effect of commanding minimum priority on the bus, which means that none of the messages from the diagnostic device will have a higher priority than messages in the car. The first byte, CD, is a data length code, or DLC. This tells the ECU in the car how many bytes to interpret as data and how many are padded at the end. Its format is the hex value C8 plus the number of significant bytes to follow, in this case, five. The second byte, 7A, is the address of the ECU I want to reply from. Each ECU in the car has its own one byte address. In this case, I'm requesting data from the engine control module, which has an address of 7A. The third byte, A6, is a command. In this case, it seems to be similar to the UDS read current data by identifier command. The fourth and fifth bytes are the parameter identifier numbers. Each parameter you can read from an ECU has a 2-byte identifier. In this case, 129D is the identifier for boost pressure. The 6th byte, 
tells the ECU to send the data a single time. All the rest of the data is padding to make up 8 bytes. If I send this message on the high-speed CAN bus, I receive a reply similar to my request. The message ID of the response is always the same. On this vehicle, it's this hex value. Byte 1 of the response serves exactly the same function as the request and is a simple C8 plus the number of significant bytes to follow. Byte 2 is the address of the replying ECU. In this case, 7A is the same ECU I requested from. Byte 3 is the A6 command plus the hex value of 40 to signify a reply. Byte 4 and 5 is the same identifier as the request. This can be useful if you're requesting multiple data parameters and need to organize the responses. And finally, byte 6 is the value of the data that I requested. The data is presented as absolute pressure in kilopascals. In order to convert that to gauge pressure reference to atmosphere, I need to subtract the value of atmospheric pressure. While this varies depending on the weather and altitude, an average value of 101.352 kPa is acceptable for my requirements. Now that I know how to get the data I need from the car, I need to figure out how to display this information in an intuitive and non-distracting way. First, I'll need a microcontroller capable of sending and receiving CAN messages at high speeds. This microcontroller should also be capable of surviving the harsh electrical environment in a vehicle, and ideally it should be compact and easy to wire into the car. With two CAN bus interfaces, an onboard voltage regulator, and compact design, the Machina M2 is the perfect candidate. As a bonus, the dual CAN interfaces will allow me to send and receive data on both the high and low speed buses. For a display, I picked the 1.38 inch round LCD display from 4D Systems. It is easy to interface with, matches the size of the typical gauge face, and has an onboard programmable processor for updating the LCD. The microcontroller and display communicate via a serial link. In order to fit the display in the car, I designed and printed a custom bracket to hold the LCD that attaches to the instrument cluster surround with a small piece of double-sided tape. This leads to the final piece of the puzzle, how to make the display turn on and off with the car. Since I can't use the diagnostic commands with the ignition of the car off, I need to find another way to determine the status of the ignition in the vehicle. One of the fundamental operating principles of CAN is that every ECU on the bus receives every message, even ones not intended for it. If an ECU receives a message that wasn't intended for it, it simply ignores it. This also has the effect of being able to very easily set up broadcast or multicast messages that multiple ECUs can react to. With this in mind, there was likely a frame that contained bits that encoded the dashboard brightness value and the ignition status somewhere. If I could manage to find the message that contains the status of the buttons on the steering wheel, I could also use those as a way of controlling my microcontroller. So how do you find which messages do what? Trial and error. By organizing all the messages by ID and watching the data on each one, you will eventually find a message that changes in response to the button you're pressing. Once you know what message to be looking out for, all you need to do is write some code to watch for that message ID and parse the relevant data, just like any other ECU on the bus. Here is an example of the message for dashboard brightness and the light sensor. The message ID is shown here. This is set by the car manufacturer when they're designing the car's communication systems. The last four bits, or lower nibble, of byte 1 is the dashboard brightness value. Despite the adjustment knob being analog, there are only 16 values for dashboard brightness once it's been converted to digital. The first bit of byte 2 is a 1 if the light sensor is below a threshold value that dims the dashboard and turns the headlights on. Otherwise, it is a 0. Using the same strategy, I found the frames for ignition status and the cruise control buttons. The only thing left now is to put it all together. Just to recap, the code I write will need to periodically send diagnostic request messages to the ECM, interpret any response messages and update values in the code, send data to the LCD about those current values, and watch for frames from the car about ignition status, dashboard brightness, and cruise control buttons 
and react accordingly. After a couple of weeks of development, I finally have a finished product. Here is some footage of the screen while I'm driving the car. I ended up implementing four different screens for other data I wanted to watch while driving. You can switch which screen is currently displayed by holding the cruise control cancel button for two seconds. Here you can see the display for boost pressure, intake temperature, coolant temperature, and ignition timing. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a good idea of my process for experimenting with more in-depth car communication systems. The ideas and techniques I use in this video could easily extend to other vehicles and I encourage you to give it a shot. Bye for now.